Atlas has a collector's edition problem. Ever since Shin Megami Tensei 5, Atlas collector's editions have gone downhill in value proposition, availability, quality, and shipping time. If you've seen the Soul Hackers 2 collector's edition, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. Let's quickly go over Shin Megami Tensei 5. SMT5's Collector's Edition has a few problems to go over, but they're not that bad compared to the other two on the list. For one, availability was awful. The major retailers all got supply, but it was in a staggered release schedule. That would have been fine if Atlas had given us the schedule beforehand, but we were kept in the dark about all of it. One day it was GameStop, then the next it was Amazon, then the next it was Best Buy, and it made people scramble from store to store just to make sure they could get one. I was fortunately able to get one for myself, but Amazon just had to make the situation worse. My collector's edition came in a bubble mailer. Yes, you heard me right, my $120 collector's edition came in a bubble mailer. As if that's not bad enough, some people's orders came in nothing. Just slapped the label on the box and called it a day. This isn't the fault of Atlas, of course, but it's still a very bad look. And because of this, enough people returned their order to the point where Amazon put the collector's edition back up for sale at a discounted price because so many were damaged. I don't know if this new stock, in quotes, was also shipped in bubble mailers, but I honestly doubt that Amazon actually learned from their mistakes. From what I can tell, no other retailer packaged their orders this poorly. Getting to the actual CE itself though, it wasn't bad per se, but it was a bit overpriced for what you got. This is up to personal opinion obviously, but I don't feel like I got my money's worth. With this CE, you got a steelbook that was not exclusive, a two-disc soundtrack, which included some tracks from the game, along with some remixes from past SMT titles, you got a small bag that could fit a Nintendo Switch, maybe a Steam Deck if you stretch it, and you also got a Demon Handbook. While not awful, it's certainly not nearly as good as the original Persona 5 Royal Collector's Edition, the Persona 5 Collector's Edition, or even the SMT4 Collector's Edition. This one would have been good if it were $90 to $100, at least to me. All in all, this CE isn't a disaster or anything, but its awful release schedule along with the mediocre value proposition earns it a spot in this video. But that doesn't even come close to what we have next. The next collector's edition on the list is Soul Hackers 2. This one is very different to SMT5 CE due to how it was distributed. For one, it was exclusive to the Shop Atlas store. This isn't inherently a problem until you realize how scummy the store is. Starting off with pre-orders, they were only up for a few hours until it was sold out. This isn't a problem, as I said it was going to be a limited release. The problem is that the email that was supposed to be sent out to customers who applied for it came late for many people causing them to miss out on the pre-order window. Pre-orders didn't open up again either, that was the one time. If you were able to get the checkout though, you had to cough up the bare minimum of $225. The CE itself is $200 and the shipping is $25. No matter where you live in the continental United States, it was $25. You could live 5 minutes away from the Atlas warehouse and it would still be $25, and to me, that's ridiculous. There's no confirmation of this, but my theory is that due to it being such a limited run, it had to cost more than if they were to produce a higher number of collector's editions, as items become cheaper when you order them in bulk. Another theory is that the Iho demon figure in the box is to blame, as those had to be shipped all the way from Japan since they originated from the Japanese collector's edition. The problem with that logic is that the Demon Handbook in the SMT5 Collector's Edition also came from the Japanese version, but that was only $120, and it also had the soundtrack CDs from the Japanese version to boot. Let's move on to the items in the box. For $200 plus $25 shipping, you got the game in a separate shipment, which we'll talk about later. You got a steelbook, a 16GB USB stick with the soundtrack on it, a frankly sad looking Mimi plush, a keychain inspired by Saizo, and a pin set based on your party members, as well as the Iho Demon figure I talked about earlier. Again, it's fine, but nowhere near $225 worth of stuff. It gets worse though, because this collector's edition came late, and this wouldn't be an issue if customers were told this from the get-go. 
but as far as I can tell, Atlas told us this way after pre-orders were over. Obviously, shipping complications can happen outside of their control, and there's not much they can do about it. But what they should have done is given customers a partial refund for the inconvenience, at least in my opinion. Hell, even free DLC codes would have been something. Getting back to it though, do you want to guess how late? A few days? A week? Two weeks? No. It came almost four weeks late. Orders didn't start arriving till September 20th for most people. In my opinion, this proves how underprepared Atlas was to deal with shipping this out. And in all honesty, they should have looked for a retailer who would be willing to do some sort of exclusivity deal instead of doing it all in-house. Or better yet, make more of the collector's edition so they can knock the price down. Putting it in more than one retailer would have likely been less headache in the long run. But in all honesty, I don't think Atlas has learned their lesson. Persona 5 Royal Remastered is the most recent collector's edition that's been announced and probably will be for a while. P5R CE isn't as egregious as Soul Hackers 2, but in some ways, I think it's actually a bit worse. One positive change is that this one is much cheaper, starting out at $120. That does not include shipping though. Let's go check the real shipping price. What the hell? Oh my god, no way! $31. How in God's name is the shipping $31? Is this thing full of rocks? For real though, why is it so expensive? I can't tell if the pricing is fixed or if it's based on where you live or not, but either way, it's crazy. With taxes and shipping, it would cost me $162 to buy this. Compared to Soul Hackers 2, that's not so bad, right? Let's take a look at what's actually in the box. You get a treasure chest box, an art frame, art prints to put in the art frame, and a catchy laptop bag, tarot cards, and a steelbook which isn't exclusive. It's not bad per se, but it's kind of lackluster for the price you'll end up paying, and wow, I sound like a broken record at this point. The one thing that's missing is a soundtrack, whether it be on CD or a USB stick. One of the only good things about the CE is that Atlas was transparent about the shipping this time around. The game will come by launch date, while the collector's edition is shipping sometime in November. I honestly can't tell if this one is worse than the one for Soul Hackers 2, as it is cheaper, but in my opinion has worse items. At least with a keychain and a pin set, I can use those items and carry them around with me. But there's nothing of the sort in the P5R collector's edition. I hope Atlas changes this new habit of theirs as limiting the collector sets to their site actively ruins the goodwill they have with fans, along with swamping themselves with extra work that they don't need to do. Even if the collector's editions were limited to GameStop or Best Buy or something like that, that would still be better than paying $31 for shipping on an item that does not even come on launch day. Did I miss anything? Are there any other problems with Atlas that I should go over? If you liked the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. I've also got a Patreon and a Discord if you'd like to join either of those. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.